Let's go. Let's get into it. Soul Not For Sale podcast. We got Joe Rogan talking with a guest who took 18 months to recover from a DMT trip, which is absolutely wild to me. But I understand exactly what happened. I can't wait for you guys to hear the clip. This is what happens when you do too much too often. You shouldn't be playing around with stuff like this. And he did. And what people go through when they go through what he's experienced is it's like torture. It really is. I've seen people go through this. I haven't gone through it myself, but I have been someone who ended up abusing psychedelics. I've been in this realm before. So we're going to talk about that. But also, I'm going to play a little clip from Terrence McKenna after he's done. Because Terrence McKenna actually had a similar experience. But... Of course, it's Terrence McKenna, so the way that he breaks it down, it's just hilarious, and so it paints such a perfect picture as he goes through it all. But let this clip be a warning to people who think that it's all just fun and games. You have to know what you're doing. And Neil obviously didn't. Let's get into it. Don't forget about this channel I got here. It's the new channel where I break away from the Rogan content. Coach Call In Media. Go ahead and check it out. We're looking for 2,000 subscribers and we're almost there. Help us by hitting that subscribe button. Plus, we got 33 videos up already. Let's get into the Rogan clip. Well, I would this because I come and give updates on my mental health. Uh. <laughs> How are you doing now? I'm doing great. I, this is what I want to talk about. So so all the ayahuasca set a really nice, got me off antidepressants, got me believing in God, in a in a central creation force that's non, not a gender or whatever. It's just a thing. <laughs> it's just a magnet, basically. Say it's a woman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah please. Uh, wrong podcast. God's chance. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, and, then I, and then the DMT broke me and put me back together. And after the DMT, the 5-MeO that I smoked... Um, it was a year and a half of, I thought it was eight months of chaos, and then I did an ayahuasca ceremony a year and a half after I'd smoked the DMT, it was the first time back, and I felt the DMT door close. And I was like, it was open that whole fucking time? What do you mean by that? Okay, so DMT opened up my brain uh, too much, a little too much, open borders. <laughs> I, I was, um, I was uh, experiencing too much of the universe. I believe like m most of being a human being is just like this. You you have we understand that we're a rock in space, but it's just like my fucking house and my apartment and my car and my fucking the things that I understand. My family that the DMT made it so I could experience like time a lot more. Uh, I talked about it last time where I had a hard time watching the screensaver on Apple TV, the mountain ranges and shit. I was I got a sense i understood how old they were in a way you're kind of not supposed to what do you mean? when you know when someone goes hey can you believe the mountain the rocky mountains are uh 700 000 years old and you go yeah that's crazy but nothing nothing happens i kind of understood how long a time that was i was like way out i was way out and then i slowly kind of came back it took about it took a year and a half and what was the what was the negative aspects of being way out uh it was it was, uh, I told somebody I was aiming for God and I missed my stop. <laughs> <laughs> and I woke up on a, like a moving train with no conductor and going a million miles an hour. So it was because you were taking in too much information that you hadn't considered before. So it became unmanageable. The DMT. Well, I had the Michael Pollan experience where the DMT took me back to, took me to, when I inhaled it, I went to before the big bang. And Mike Pollan said it on here because I looked it up. I was like, where have I heard? And I was like, that's where I was. Uh, and so I, so I slowly, the, the issue was, so the DMT was pretty much a DMT 25 minute, 35 minute experience of like, I was before the Big Bang and my personality kind of came back and I was kind of going like, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to be like petty. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be like a virtuous person. I'm just going to be like, I'm going to remember this God connection and all that stuff. And then a week later, I had a reactivation. A week later? Yeah. You know that thing of like, there's a thing which people have DMT reactivations. where like you flashback. Yeah. Basically what the joke of like an acid flashback. Mm -hmm. I had that for, and it's common with smoking DMT. Yeah. And I had one. So now I'm, it's a Sunday in New York. I'm on a coffee date with a woman. 
in this side of my frame, this side is fucking pure whiteness, infinite time. <laughs> it was harrowing. So you saw it? It wasn't like a pure split screen, but it was like energetically kind of a split screen. Was it something that you thought and you felt in your mind or was it something you were experiencing visually? It was, it was, yeah, I shouldn't say that it was, I couldn't see it, see it, but it felt, you felt it. yeah, I felt and it. So I would say that I was split between reality, current reality, and then this infinity, uh, sort of energetically. And was it giving you anxiety? Yeah. Oh, I was so disoriented. I had the thought like, am I in God's imagination? Shit. That's not great mm, to think God's when you're just in, in on a Sunday walking around in New York. Yeah. Especially and, if you're on a date. I mean, come on. And, uh, and you're just, you're yeah, you're just trying, trying to, like, trying to make something happen. Yeah. See if this and like pay attention. You. My friend yeah. of mine said, she goes, you just seem really preoccupied. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I had a lot on my plate. Did you watch that uh, Hemingway documentary on PBS? No, it's mm, well, I yeah. recommend it highly. Yeah. Ken, Ken Burns, Hemingway, oh, wow. black and white pushes. Uh, and I'm not even a Hemingway fan. It, there were some passages that are like, mm, OK, this is amazing. But there's a part they showed maybe the Spanish Civil War. He went there. I think it's Spanish Civil War. Uh, and there's a uh, passage from one of his books where he got shot, I believe. And he said he explained it as like my spirit came out of my body like a ribbon and then came back in. And I was watching with my friend. I go, hey, can we stop real quick? Because I was like in that world <laughs> like that. Day, it would, This was the reactivation day. And I was like, yeah, I need to not watch this because I'm in that thing where my spirit can come back. And co it was like touch and go. I, I think I made this last time. I would have killed myself, but I knew I'd be going into more of it. Wow. So it was like real difficult, like real, like on the edge of my bit. Yeah. I would say, I don't want to say, I don't know what pre-psychotic would be, <laughs> like pre-diabetic. I feel like I was like, yeah, pretty close. Now, over time, I got better every day and, uh, you know, I got returned to norm, but I was more able to fall in love, more generous. I would, I'm funnier on stage. I get 15% more and bigger laughs, like, because I'm spiritual and people notice it. Like, hey, what's different about you? Uh, on stage is better. This Netflix thing is like my best one because it's just like, I'm lighter. Mm. I'm just lighter. Um, so that was hard to deal with. But after the year and a half passed, I, I'm a better, it's easier to be me. It's easier to deal with me. Everything's improved. Um, so then in the last year or so, every few months, I do MDMA. And like in a sort of not necessarily therapeutic environment, but like in a, with a spiritual bent. Um What's happened from the ayahuasca and the DMT is when I've done mushrooms, it's ayahuasca. It's a God connection or what I perceive as a God connection. When I do MDMA now, it's a God connection. And I've been able to, I believe I've been able to change my, I don't want to say spirit, but I think it's synapses, whatever, however you want to like, you know, categorize it. Your operating system. Yeah. Basically, you're. It's like you get. You are. You are getting a, a new. You get an update, an OS update, and you know the thing with updates on computers is the computer goes to sleep. Sometimes you're awake <laughs> for these updates. And you're like, I've literally done the joke on ayahuasca. Like, is there any other system you have? Because <laughs> this is little a little touch and go for me. I appreciate it, and I always get so much from it in the long term. But in the short term, the, I did ayahuasca. I don't know in November. And there was a point where I went up to the shaman. I go, hey, this is, I'm like a little close to God right now. Could you just give me like a nudge? Because <laughs> it's very hard to comprehend, honestly. Yeah. It's as someone who's sort of experimenting in this world, like it's, you know, there are moments that are hard to comprehend. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's a hard thing to communicate. Like It's interesting because I think overall you would say the benefit is worth it, but it's a slippery road. Yeah, well, it's hard. It's very hard to do. And that's the thing, and we talked about this last time, about sort of the mainstreaming of all this stuff. It's Pandora's box, man, because there's peop a lot of people, I'm I'm whatever I am, an uh, uh, intelligent person, an accomplished person, and I felt like I was pretty psychotic for a couple of days, and I would have killed myself if not. Like, that's a pretty, that would have been a significant. So you re genuinely thought about killing yourself? Well, I didn't have a plan or anything, but like, but I was like, this is, this is unbearable. No, it was like, this is unbearable, mm. what I'm in right now. Where like I'm on her, am I in God's? Am I, who am? What? What is this? What is any of this? Yeah. What is what is steps? 
mm-hmm. walking down steps going, why is any of this? Why am I a person in a whatever? Got through it. Better. And then the MDMA, I've been able to sort of, I don't know if you want to do software updates or whatever, but it's just made me more. I had one that was really great, which was I did it. He's doing it too much. I let the clip run a little long there, but that's that is what it sounds like when someone is doing these things too much. And here's what ends up happening when you do these things too much and you feel like you need to do them. You start making these grandiose claims like you're in God's imagination where every time you do it, there's a God connection. You're trying to kind of solidify. And believe me, this is somebody I'm somebody who's I've I've had a fantastic, fantastic experiences. But I've also been the person who's doing it too much and running away from life. Because there's a whole bunch of life that I'm supposed to be dealing with and, you know, milestones I'm supposed to be achieving as a man and I'm supposed to be evolving and you're supposed to do it here in this world. And and another thing is, you know, when you feel like you've met God, you have no problem saying that you've met God. You don't call it some uh, it's basically a magnet. It has no gender. I don't want to offend anybody. You just say I found God. I found God. I found my religion. It's just, it's just the way it goes. But he does. He's done way too much. That's why he's talking about it being a God connection. He's trying to kind of, and this is just my view. This this is just what I've seen. I've done a ton. I've been around people who have done so much. I've had meetings about it. I've done podcasts about it. I've done, I've done, I've done all sorts of things, conferences, like all sorts. I've been deep, deep in this world. And this is what it looks like when somebody has just done way too much. I love the face that I caught him in. There you go. <laughs> There you go, kids. This is what you look like when you've done too much. You know, just that alone, just saying, you know, I'm doing it every few months. Like eventually, and this is the thing that I learned, and I actually got this message, whether it be from God or whatever you're experiencing, but something came to me and was like, you've done it. This is enough. This is your last time. You don't need to keep coming here. You know what I mean? It's like if you had a car. And you needed your car fixed and you went to see a mechanic and you got your car fixed up, right? But then he's like, oh, well, there's some more work to do. And then you come the next week. But then after a year, if your mechanic, your mechanic eventually be like, hey, man, you were just here three weeks ago. You don't need to be. I fixed your car already. You're good. Oh, I just I feel like uh, something's up with the paint or something. I'm just here again. Oh, I feel like the tires are just I don't know. Just can you just look it over again? Hey, can you just look it over again? Eventually, your mechanic's going to be like, listen, buddy, I, I don't need to keep taking your money like this. That's enough, man. Just drive your car. When something happens, let me know. But when it comes to the realm of psychedelics, it's way more fun than going to see a mechanic. So you get real into it, real into it. And this is exactly what Neil did. And, he, and the fact that he even said, I opened up too much. You know, it, it also sounds like, to me, like he's not going through any um, reintegration where you actually sit and talk with somebody and kind of put yourself back together. You know, you're not supposed to do things like this and just go out into the world, like sober up and just be like, all right, time to walk around. You're not supposed to do that. And there's actually a name for what he's experiencing. And I've seen this in people. It's very scary. It's called derealization. I'm going to get to that Terrence McKenna clip right now. It's called derealization. It's when you start, it's very blurry between the lines of your experience and reality. And you're done your experience, but you don't feel like you fully stepped into reality. You're almost like in a limbo. And that's why, honestly, I used to have the view that everybody should do these things. And after I've grown up a bit, and now I have a kid, uh, you know, and I have a, the mother of my, my, my child, my wife. I don't think everybody should do it. Yeah, I think I think you should, you know, do what you want and everybody should have the freedom, whatever. But I don't know if it's for everybody. Like I would have never advised if when you know that what Neil is going through is a possibility, you kind of just say, uh, maybe not. You know, I'm not going to tell you to do it. Before I used to be like, everybody should. You know, why, why wouldn't you? But now I'm like, nah, I don't think so, man. You know, do what you want. But I don't think everybody should be doing it. Here's Terrence McKenna's story about the spirit lashing out at him, the spirit 
of the the mushroom in his case lashing out at him because there will be something that will lash out at you and this is also what i think happened to neil eventually if you play around and, and don't approach it with reverence there is there there will be consequences for you just being like oh i'm just you're treating it like as if you're just going to starbucks and just sitting down and having a frappuccino like that's not what this is you, you don't treat things like that you don't treat those type of things like that. You can treat Starbucks like that if you want, but listen to Terrence McKenna. Now, this is him after grabbing a big bag of this substance, this mushroom substance, and he gets an encounter because he just started playing around. He's like, oh, I'm just going to do more, and I'm just going to do it on a Saturday, and it's just because I want to do it, and this is what ends up happening. Listen. So I'll just take nine grams instead and this is where the learning takes place. The mistakes, treasure your mistakes. Uh, so the thing, it's like I'm sitting there and suddenly I realize, oh my God, it's coming at me. It's a hundred miles wide. It's 10 miles high and it's just rolling toward me. It looks, and, and I barely had time to lay down. That's how fast it, and a voice said, you know, <laughs> get prepared, the storm is about to hit the beach. And, uh, and I laid down, and it was just, it was like a tornado hitting. And at one point, I opened my eyes, and the, there was this woman in a full bondage getup with, uh, you know, piercings and rubber panties and the whole thing. And she and I was lying there between her legs. She was standing upright, and and she put her face right down next to mine, and she said, "Is it strong enough for you, asshole?" <laughs> <laughs> to which I replied, "Yes," <laughs> and she said, and then she said. They say it helps to close your eyes, cowboy. <laughs> and I later, in thinking about that trip, I realized the reason the goddess, the reason the mushroom addressed me as cowboy is because that's most people mushrooms have met have been cowboys and cowgirls because they're the people who follow the cows. And uh, most people have encountered this thing in the past. You know, Maria Sabina, the mushroom shamaness of Oaxaca, claimed. I know you could listen to him forever, but I just wanted to play that one part. That's when he decided that he was just going to do more for the sake of doing more. And he said the amount that he took, which is a ridiculous amount. And then uh, it lashed out at him and said, is it strong enough for you? And it took him down a wild, wild road that he gets into a bit, into, uh, a bit more. But... Yeah, just hearing Neil's story, it's that used to be something where I'd be like, oh, yeah, good job, man. But now I hear it and I'm like, oh, that was dangerous. You could have you could have upset your family with the things you were thinking about doing. You're out in public just doing things and you're on dates and you're not telling anybody what you're going through so much. That's it's it's all very dangerous, you know, and the thing is. You know, and I know people who have felt like they've come closer to God but the, because of these substances. But then they stop and they build a relationship with God. So if you feel like there's a God connection, like he's claiming, go pick up some scripture. I don't Listen, I'm not going to tell you what religion to go towards. But if you're feeling that, go towards some books and start reading about it. Go towards some prayer and start feeling about it. But don't just be like, oh, the only way I connect to God is through MDMA. That's ridiculous. I, I, listen, if I could hear, if my 20-year-old self could hear me right now, you'd be like, oh, this old man, this old man's talking a bunch of, but it's, it's true, man. Move towards, like, build, build, progress, move on from things. You know, that was one of the things that got me sober. You know, for years, for decades, I was struggling with addiction. And one day, I started having this thought process of, I have been high long enough. I have done all the things enough. And I should probably live life without it for a while. 
because how much can I do? I already know my life is not good while I'm doing these things, and maybe it'll be better if I don't. And I've already done everything you could do. What do, what do I need to do this anymore for? And I moved away from it. And honestly, that's what I think uh, Neil should be doing. He encountered it at first. If you go through his little stint of how long he's been on the JRE, he started with K and he was doing it for depression and he was doing it in a controlled setting with around doctors, which is great. That's what he started at. And then the next time he was on, he was talking about still doing that and doing ayahuasca. He was getting to the point where he was calling it Aya. You know, he's getting real Hollywood about it, getting real cocky about it, which is why this last appearance, he had to deal with this for a year and a half, which it's been almost a year and a half since he was last on the show, which is interesting. But he went one, like the first time was that second time he was still doing it third time. It's clear that he's still doing it. This is like a three, four year span. Maybe at some point you're just not supposed to do it. Maybe you're supposed to chill. Maybe you're supposed to just write down the things you've learned. Maybe you should start expanding on it that way. You know, I'm a coach, you know, coach Colin. It's not just a thing, but I actually coach people. And after I coach people and we're done the program and they're like, oh, I want to go again. I go, yeah, maybe you should just wait, wait like a week. He's like, I'll give you a bonus session. You wait a week, integrate the stuff. You've written down notes. I want you to read your notes. I usually record our sessions. I'm like, here you go. Here's the recordings. You can watch them. Like, take in what you just did. You don't have to keep going, keep going, keep going. That's just my rant about that. I've, uh, I guess I've changed my stance on, on psychedelics. Not in a bad way. I still think people should have the freedom, but I definitely recognize abuse, especially as somebody who's a former addict. I, I recognize abuse when I see it. And, you know, just for anybody who thought that story that he was telling was cool, it's cool. It sounds funny. But if you go through something like that, it could get dark. And let me just wrap up with this story because I actually had a friend. I actually, I've done ayahuasca. The time that I did it, I was alongside someone. Okay. I won't even call them a friend. I was alongside someone and they went through this thing, this derealization thing. They went through what Neil went through and it got very dark and it got very scary. And there was almost, um, I don't want to say, I want to say like psychiatric. There was almost people who had to get involved because of what this person was going through. And it was terrible. And I, and I had nothing to do with it. I was completely removed, but I kept hearing about it and hearing about it. And I was like, oh, they're going through a very terrible, terrible thing. And it doesn't happen to everybody, and it doesn't happen all the time. But when it does happen, it's it's scary, you know? And from that person's depiction, hearing it third hand, they said that they went down to hell, and they experienced everything bad that they did, and they were dragged through hell back into reality, and he couldn't click with reality anymore. And he recovered, and he's good now, but again, it was a very torturous experience from what it sounded like. I don't know, man. You got to really think about what you're doing when it comes to this stuff. You know, sometimes you just want to get away. Sometimes you just want to feel better from whatever it is that you're going through, but you still have to be careful. You have to be careful. And I'll, and I'll wrap it up with this. Honestly, if you're a guy and you're feeling like you need to get better, all those things work, but also try relationship with God. Also try talking to somebody, try counseling, try all of these things. A lot of people nowadays want to jump straight to psychedelics. And I, I don't, I, I used to think that was the thing. And I, and, and I, and I, and I did that myself, but I don't think that's the way I think you should try a bunch of other things. I know, I know now that a relationship with God helps tremendously. I know now talking with friends or professionals or coaches helps tremendously. And I know now that a woman's love, so, I'm, so you guys have heard my wife countless times. She's a full-time mom now. We'll try and get her back on the podcast soon. But I know the love of a great woman will help tremendously as well. Rebuilding relationships with parents will help as well. With your siblings will help as well. There's many other things that you can do. 
Be careful is what I'm saying. Okay. Coming from old man coach. <laughs> There's going to be a whole. Now I'm going to wake up with more gray hair because of everything I just said. Ah, oh, man. Whatever. It's worth it. Definitely. Anyways, guys, like, subscribe, share. It helps tremendously. And let me know any experiences that you've had that were negative or positive. I want to hear it all. Anyways, I'm out.